If you think spotty Wi-Fi and no plumbing are the worst things that could happen at a weekend retreat, think again. People get on the coast, we've got to go right. Don't move! They're bad trash, they're everywhere. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Cabin in the Woods horror movies. For this list, we're looking at horror movies that mainly feature a cabin set in the woods. So, whether there are supernatural forces at play or basket cases looking for fun, it's fair game. Let's do this! Number 10. Sleepaway Camp. Eat shit and die, Ricky! Eat shit and live, Bill. Welcome to Camp Arawak, where kids come to enjoy outdoor activities, make friends, and get murdered. <laughs> Years after a traumatic event, a shy Angela attends the sleepaway camp with her cousin, who protects her from bullies. Soon after, bodies start piling up, and it's becoming very clear that these deaths are no accident. <laughs> Barring the fact that the low-budget movie capitalized on the popularity of other slasher films, Sleepaway Camp was a success and inspired a couple of sequels. I just don't see how something like that could happen. While the acting is admittedly terrible, the movie is best remembered for the shocking reveal and the most haunting freeze frame you'll ever see. Spoiler alert, by the way. Oh God, she's a boy. <laughs> Number nine, Secret Window. I killed a mirror. <laughs> and my shower door. In the midst of a mental breakdown, famous writer Mort Rainey escapes to his cabin where a mysterious man named John Shooter accuses him of plagiarism. You stole my story. He then must take a cold hard look in the mirror as his run-ins with Shooter become increasingly frequent and violent. What do you want? If you want to kill me, why don't you just do it? Just kill me. No, sir. Based on Stephen King's novella, Secret Window, Secret Garden, which was praised by readers, it's unfortunate that the movie received only mixed reviews. You strike me as the kind of guy who's on the lookout for a head he can knock off with a shovel. The plot is intriguing and keeps you captivated until the very end, which is ironic considering Mort's opinion on story endings. The only thing that matters is the ending. It's the most important part of the story, the ending. And this one, it's very good. This one's perfect. Number eight, Tucker and Dale versus Evil. You guys, uh, going camping? <laughs> Meet the two most benevolent hicks you'll ever find in a horror movie. I know what this is. What? This is a suicide pact. Best buds Tucker and Dale set out to renovate their dream vacation spot. A rundown cabin, you guessed it, in the middle of the woods. It's just a cabin. It doesn't mean they're psycho killers. When a group of college students encounters them, they mistake the duo for the usual homicidal hillbillies you'll find in horror flicks and fight them to survive. Ah, we got your friend! Oh, God! They got Allison! <laughs> hey! We got your friend! Why the hell are they running away? Hey! Tucker and Dale vs. Evil upends the traditional conventions of heroes and villains while displaying some of the most gruesome accidental deaths ever to grace the silver screen. Alan Tudyk and Tyler Labine are phenomenal as the lovable rednecks and teach us that hillbillies are people too. How's Evil walking right now, Tuck? He looks like he's gonna walk it off. He's gonna be fine. <sighs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> Number 7. The Strangers. There's someone out there. <laughs> <laughs> to say that Kristen and James are hitting a rough patch is the biggest understatement of this movie, which claims to be inspired by true events. The couple is terrorized by three masked individuals who strip them of their means of escape and communication with the outside world. Gonna die. Trapped in a summer home with limited resources and fearing for their lives, it's a frightening situation that no one wants to experience. What do you want? I get the f out of here. 
the suspense is palpable, and the performances by Liv Tyler and Scott Speedman are what keep the plot moving forward. Just don't look too closely for an explanation from the strangers. Some evil is just random. Why are you doing this to us? Because you were home. Number six, The Burning. Don't breathe, he'll hear you. Don't move. You're dead! Based on the urban legend of Cropsey, this movie centers on a camp caretaker who is horrifically mutilated in a failed prank. Tonight's the night that we scare the shit out of Cropsey. <laughs> Armed with garden shears, Cropsey hunts down the culprits and exacts revenge on those who disfigured him. <laughs> The low-budget slasher horror may not have been a box office hit, but it is notable for gaining cult status and for featuring the debut performances of Holly Hunter, Fisher Stevens, and Jason Alexander. In addition, the makeup and special effects were done by Tom Savini, the Sultan of Splatter known for Dawn of the Dead and Maniac. Over the top and quite the splatterfest, this movie is full of highlights, cheesy as they may be. <laughs> Number five, Cabin Fever. Oh my gosh, wow. The best weekend ever turns into an absolute nightmare as a group of college students struggles to contain those infected with a flesh-eating virus. Come on, leave it alone! <laughs> Sounds far-fetched, right? Well, this movie was actually inspired by a real-life experience when co-writer slash director Eli Roth had a ringworm infection so severe that when he shaved his face, chunks of skin peeled off. So, as you can imagine, Cabin Fever has blood and gore in spades. At times, the horror is interrupted by absurd moments. No pancakes. PANCAKES! No pancakes! However, the concept that terror isn't a crazed chainsaw enthusiast, but a deadly virus, is what really gets under our skin. Good night, f***er. Got him. Number four, Dead Snow. Tror man att det? Det här var onda satans jävla. What's more sinister than a zombie? A Nazi zombie, of course. Well, at least according to the writers of Dead Snow. Seven students spend Easter vacation in a cabin in the Norwegian mountains. And after learning the story of a faction of brutal Nazis who terrorized a town during World War II and were supposedly left to die, they must contend with said horde of undead zombies. I saw these two days to just on their beach. The plot may be lacking, but the action, effects, and infusion of Scandinavian folklore are what makes Dead Snow stand apart from other zombie movies. If you're looking for a twist on the classic setting, with brutal dismemberments and grisly deaths, then this movie's got you covered, while also teaching you a thing or two about the human anatomy. <laughs> Number three, Friday the 13th. I think we better stop. A relentless killer stalks a group of would-be camp counselors who want to reopen the abandoned Camp Crystal Lake. Kill her, mommy. Kill her. Friday the 13th is considered one of the most iconic slasher horror movies ever and remains as a continuing inspiration for horror movies everywhere. <laughs> What distinguishes the original from its sequels, crossover, and reboot, however, is the reveal of the killer's identity and motivation behind the killings. Don't let her get away, Mommy. Don't let her live. I won't, Jason. I won't. At the time, many critics gave negative reviews, while also voicing concerns that the audience would side with the killer. As you can probably guess, Friday the 13th later received official praise for breaking new ground and it's truly become a Cabin in the Woods horror classic. You're doomed. You're all doomed. Number two, The Cabin in the Woods. Okay, I'm drawing a line in the 
and saying here, do not read the Latin. Stop us if you've heard this one before. A group of college students spends the weekend at a remote cabin in the woods. What's believed to be an homage to horror classics takes an unexpected turn as the predictable script is thrown out the window. Congratulations go to maintenance who share the pot with Ronald the intern. This movie, written by Joss Whedon and Drew Goddard, functions as a typical slasher horror flick while at the same time exploring the horror genre and its cultural significance. So meta. I'm sorry I let you get attacked by a werewolf and then into the world. The screenplay is sharp and peppered with clever lines and pulls no punches. Cleanse the world of their ignorance and sin. Bathe them in the crimson of... Am I on speakerphone? While The Cabin in the Woods is stuffed with humor and references to beloved horror movies, it doesn't shy away from getting its hands bloody. It works out beyond. Before we reveal our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. We're gonna find a road, we're gonna get to a town, and we're going home. We're gonna get married, all right? And we are never going into the woods again. Not so little boy, I'm probably twice your age just because I can't murder or kill. Evil Dead 2, Dead by Dawn. Groovy. While we love the original Evil Dead, the 1987 sequel slash remake surpasses it in every way. I swallow your soul! I swallow your soul! <laughs> swallow this. Bringing us all the chills, spills, and thrills of the original, Sam Raimi's Evil Dead 2 adds the right amount of madness to the formula. <laughs> Bruce Campbell returns as the cabin-bound Ash Williams and gives the performance of a lifetime, a presence that was sorely missed in the 2013 remake, for the most part. Groovy. Taking place in an isolated cottage replete with demons, possessed limbs, and cackling inanimate objects, <laughs> Evil Dead is not only the horror franchise that all other Cabin in the Woods movies draw influence from, Evil Dead 2 is one of the best horror movies ever made. Period. Hail to the king, baby. Gotcha, didn't I, you little sucker? Do you agree with our list? No! No! Which movie made you cringe about being in the woods? <laughs> For more blood curdling top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.